I'd say for me, it's it's, called, it's really the power of the uh, of of, better, of of the better together. You know, to me, it's nobody's great apart. It takes really an ecosystem of players to kind of work together for the customer benefit. And the one that we've demonstrated with VMware, with NetApp Plus VMware, has been a powerful one for well, well over 17 years. And the proof's in the pudding in terms of the joint customers that have a ton of loyalty to both of us. And they want us just to work it out. So, you know, whether your, whether your allegiance on one side of the Kubernetes, Kubernetes battle or another, or you're on one side of uh, anyone's you know, storage choice or another, you know, I think the customers want NetApp and VMware to work us out and, and, and come up with solutions, and we've done that. And now what, wait for the second act of this to come out. We'll start that tomorrow. I mean, to me it starts from what the customer would like to do, right, and what, what we're seeing from customers is it's, it's increasingly a multi-cloud world, right, that expands, spans private cloud, public cloud, and edge. You're smiling when you uh, say that. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's, now, yeah now. Chaos <laughs> is an opportunity for VMware. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's a challenge for customers, right? For and sure, so yeah. if you look at how VMware is trying to help there, um, so sort of square the circle. I think the first piece is this idea of consistent operations, right? That we have these management tools that you can use to um, consistently operate those environments, whether they're based on a VMware-based infrastructure or whether they're based on a native cloud infrastructure, right? So if you look at our cloud health platform, for example, it's a great example where that service can help you um, under, get visibility to your cloud spend across different cloud platforms, also vSphere-based platforms, and can help you reduce that spend over time. So that's sort of what we refer to as consistent operations, right, which can span any, any cloud. Um, you know, what my team is responsible for is more in the consistent infrastructure space, and that's really all about how do we deliver a consist consistent compute, network, and storage service that spans uh, on-prem, multiple public clouds, and, and edge. So that's really where we're bringing that same VMware cloud foundation stack to all those different environments. You know, the networking folks and networking was always relegated to being the underlay or the plumbing. Now what's becoming important is that the applications are making their intent aware to the network. And the intent is becoming aware. As the intent becomes aware, we networking people know what to do in the SD-WAN layer, which then shields all the intricacies of what needs to get done in the underlay. So to put it in very simple terms, the container is what really drives the need. And what we are doing is we are building the outcome to satisfy that need. Now containers are critical because as Pat was saying, you know, all of the new digital applications are going to be built with containers in mind. So the reason we call it client to cloud to containers because the containers can literally be anywhere. You know, we're talking about them being in the private cloud and in the public cloud. They could be right next to where the client is because of the edge cloud. They could be in the telco network, which is the telco cloud. So between these four clouds, you literally have a network of these containers and the underlying infrastructure that we are doing is to provide that SD-WAN layer that'll get the containers to talk to one another as well as to talk to the clients that are getting access to those applications. Yeah, I mean, more than McAfee, I think, you know, you, you, it's sort of, you think of the, uh, the, the analog, analog to cloud security is data center security, where you think of this sort of Amazon cloud living in an Amazon data center and, you know, how can we protect the, you know, the data and the egress uh, access into those cloud and, you, you know, same technology sort of apply. But to your point that you sort of just touched upon, it's that cloud is not living in isolation, right? First of all, that Amazon cloud is connected to a whole bunch of, you know, applications that are still sitting in the data center, right? So uh, they may not, they're potentially not moving the Oracle database to a data center. They're moving some workloads to the cloud, right? That's what most, most companies are. Okay. Hey, guess what? There's all these endpoints that are connecting. They're connecting both to the data center and the cloud. You're not going to proxy to the cloud to get to the data center. So there is gateways. So to me, cloud security uh, can't be an isolated, you know, sort of, technology that companies have to sort of think about. Now, is there, is there an opportunity to leverage the cloud to manage security better and get visibility on your security environment to do security analytics? Absolutely. So I think to me that's where it's going because security I think has been proven yeah. is no longer um, you know, sort of one sing single yeah. thing. Yeah. It's just you have to do multiple things. Every time I go talk to CISOs, they tell me they got this technology. I said, hey, wait a minute, you, you have 20, did you cut down any? Yeah, we've cut down a few, but you know, they're just nervous about cutting down too much because if that one piece of software it's catches one It's almost like an threat, insurance policy. So look, I mean, I think, we, again, we, we're kind of uh, really evolving uh, our strategic aims. You know, historically we've looked at how do we really virtualize an entire data center, right? This concept of the software-defined data center. Really automating all that and driving great speed, efficiency increases. 
And now, as we've been talking about, we're in this world where you kind of have SDDCs everywhere, right? On-prem, in the cloud, different public clouds. And so how do you really manage across all those? And th these are the things we've been talking about. And so the cloud marketplace fits into that whole concept in the sense that now we can give people one place to go to get easy access to both software and solutions from our partners as well as open source solutions. And these are things that come uh, from the Bitnami acquisition that we recently did. So <coughs> the idea here is that we can now make it super simple for our customers to become aware of the different solutions to drive those consistent operations that exist on top of our platform and with our partners, and then make it really easy for them to consume those as well. I think we've really broadened and expanded our reach over the last 10 years. It used to be we were known primarily for our sports programming, so now we have inclusive education and health programs, and we're able to bring together people with and without intellectual disabilities through those mediums. So we provide resources to schools and education, and they run Special Olympics programming during the school day. So educators want to have us because we're improving school campuses, reducing bullying, enhancing social and emotional learning, and so the work that we're doing is so, so critical with that community. And then in the area of health, we have inclusive health. So now, we're, now we've got health and medical pro, uh, professionals that are now providing health screenings for our athletes. So some of the, the younger volunteers that we get that are they're wanting to make a, a career in, in the medical field, they're exposed to our population, right? And so they learn more about their specific health needs. So it's really about changing people's attitudes. And so this community of supporters, volunteers, health professionals, education, we're really, our goal is to change people's attitudes fundamentally worldwide about people with intellectual disabilities and really kind of produce inclusive mindsets, we call it, really promote understanding. And, and so now that the, 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 the roadmap that was shared in terms of what VMware looks to do to integrate containers into the, the ESXi platform itself, right? It's, you know, managing VMs and containers next to each other, that's perfect. Uh, in terms of not having customers have to pick or choose between which platform and where you're going to deploy something. Allow them to say you can deploy it on whichever format you want, it runs in the same ecosystem and management, and then that trickles down to, again, your, your storage layer. So we do a lot of object storage within the container ecosystems today, a lot of high performance objects because you know the, the, the file sizes of instances or applications is much larger than, you know, a document file that you or I might create online. So there's a big need around performance in that space, along with, again, uh, management at scale. The whole multi-cloud, hybrid cloud movement, what's going on now with the enterprise. Your perspective on kind of where we are in that shift, if you will, or that transformation, yeah. and, and what's, uh, what's driving it? You know, yeah. what, what's, uh, what's creating That's all the funny. buzz? You get that question a lot, right? People ask the what inning are we in question. Um, right. uh, you know, it's a regular. Uh, yeah, so you what know, inning are years. we in? You know? And well, you know, it's, uh, I would say a couple years ago, you know, people said, I don't think that, the, I think the national anthem is still being played kind of thing, you know? And uh, I think the game has probably started now, but um, right. but I still think we're uh, very early innings. Um, and, uh, you know, I think I, I'd actually bring it up to even a higher level and talk about what's happening in terms of how companies are thinking about digital transformation. And it, it, what, I, what I think is happening is it's becoming a board level priority for companies. They, they can't afford to ignore it. Um, you know, digital's changing the com, you know, basis for competitive advantage in most industries around the globe. Um, and so they're investing in digital transformation and I think they're going to do that, frankly, independent of whatever macroeconomic climate we operate in. Um, and so, uh, and I think you know, the big driving force probably you know, in digital transformation today is really the cloud. Um, and so, and what we're seeing is there's a, you know, there's a particular architecture of choice that's emerging for customers. Yeah. And I think, you know, you hit the nail on the head. Networking has changed. It's no longer about speeds and feeds. It's about availability and simplicity. And so, you know, Dell and VMware, I think, are uniquely positioned to deliver a level of automation where this stuff just works, right? I don't need to go and configure these magic boxes individually. I want to just write you know, a line of code where my infrastructure is built into the CI CD pipeline and then when I deploy a workload, it just works. I don't need an army of people to go figure that out, right? And and I think that's the power of what we're working together to unleash. 15 minutes. So that was pretty dramatic moment of truth when we deployed Datrium and we started the imaging process and it was finished and to be honest, I thought that it's broken. But <laughs> it, it actually was that fast. So gave us a tremendous amount of I mean, ability to deploy and manage and do the work during the workday instead of working after hours. It, and what were you doing for data protection before Datrium? Uh, we use a variety of different solutions, backups, just to tape, and variety of 
services that actually backed up our and data. And you still do, or? No, we've given that so all you up. You swept the floor of all the legacy stuff, you yeah. got rid of that. Did you have to change your processes? Or what was that like? Was it um, painful? Was it? We have to we have to get rid of a lot of processes that were focused on backup, focused on the time that it took to manage backup. With Datrium, uh, Datrium didn't have the backup from the day one. This is something that they've designed, I think, a second year, and that was very different to see uh, the company that deals with storage creating such an innovative vision for developing all the. I mean, developing a roadmap that was actually coming true with every iteration of the software deployment. Um, so the second tier that we provisioned was the snapshots. And the snapshots that were incredibly fast, that didn't take a lot of space, that was, you know, gave us ability to restore almost instantly, um, gave us a huge amount of, um, you know, focus on not focusing on the, on the storage anymore. Well, since we're here at VMworld, right, v, you know, VMworld has about 70 million workloads I think it's actually bigger than the public cloud, right? You correct me if I'm wrong, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, the, look, on-prem's way bigger than the, the public cloud, right? No question. Exactly, and 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 what's happening, of course, is the line. growing faster, sorry, the, but, the, it's, but the, it's the much line much is blurring yeah. between, you know, what's a public cloud, what's a you know hybrid cloud, multi-cloud, edge, and so look, our opportunity is to really make all that go away for customers and allow them to choose and express our unique value add in whatever form the customer wants to use it. So you've seen us align with all the public clouds. You know, you're seeing us take steps in the edge. We're continuing to improve the on-premise systems, you know, with Project Dimension. Now it's the VMware cloud on Dell EMC that we're managing for you and it's on demand, it's consumption, and it's consumed just like a public cloud. I spend about 50% of my time talking to these customers, so we learn a lot. And here are the four big challenges they're facing. First is the explosion of data. Mm -hmm. Data is just growing so fast. Gartner estimates there'll be 175 zettabytes of data in 2025. If you cram that into iPhones, it would take 2.6 trillion iPhones and go to the sun and back, right? It's an enormous amount of data. <laughs> Second, they're worried about ransomware. Mm -hmm. It's not a question of if you'll be attacked, it's when you'll be attacked. Look at what's happening in Texas right now with the 22 municipalities dealing with that. What you want in that case is a resilient infrastructure. You want to be able to restore from a really good backup copy of data. Third, they want the hybrid multi-cloud world, just like Pat uh, Gelsinger has been talking about. That's what customers want, but they want to be able to protect their data wherever it is, make it highly available, and get insights in their data wherever it's located. And then finally, they're dealing with this massive growth in government regulations mm -hmm. around the world because of this concern about privacy. Mm -hmm. I was in Australia a few weeks ago, and one of our customers, she was telling me that she deals with 27 different regulatory environments. Uh, another customer was saying the California Privacy Act will be the death of him, and he's based in St. Louis, right? So our strategy is focused on taking away the complexity and helping the largest companies in the world deal with these challenges, and that's why we introduced the Enterprise Data Services Platform, and that's why we're here at VMworld talking about is Kubernetes the technology enabler? I mean, TCP IP was that in the old networking days. It enabled a lot of uh, uh, shifts in the industry. You were part of that wave. Yeah. Is yeah. Kubernetes that disruptive enabler? Yeah, I really see it as one of those key transition points in the industry. And as I sort of joked, if my name was Scott and uh, we were 20 years ago, I'd be banging the table calling it Java and Java defined enterprise software development for two decades. And by the way, Scott's my neighbor, he's down the hill, so I look down on Mr. McNeely, I always sort of like that. Right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, he looks up to you. <laughs> but, you know, the, you know, it changed how people did enterprise software development for the last two decades. And Kubernetes has that same kind of transformative effect, but maybe even more important, it's not just development, but also operations. And I think that's what we're uniquely bringing together with Project Pacific, really being able to bridge those two worlds together. So, you know, and if we deliver on this, you know, I think it is, uh, you know, the next decade or two will be the center of innovation for us, how we bridge those two worlds together and really give developers what they need and make it operator friendly out of the box, cross the history to the future. This is pretty powerful. 
Yeah, so this conference is, is, I think, a refreshing return to form. So VMware is, as you say, this is an operators conference, and VMware is for operators. It's not for devs. There was a period there where cloud was scary and, and it was all this cloud native stuff, and VMware tried to appeal to this new market and I guess tried to dress up and, and as something that it really wasn't, and it, it didn't pull it off. And we didn't, it didn't feel right, and now VMware has decided that, well, no, actually, this is what VMware is about. And no one can be more VMware than VMware. So it's returning to being its best self. And, and I think we're seeing software that Software too, year. again, software, they know software. They know software. So the, the addition of, of, of putting Project Tanzu in and having Kubernetes in there, and, and it's, it's to operate the software. So it's, it's going to be in there and apps will run on it, and they want to have Kubernetes baked into vSphere so that now, yeah, we'll have new, app, new apps, and yeah, they might be SaaS apps for the people who are consuming them, but they've got to run somewhere, and now we could run them on VMware, whether it's on-site, at the edge, could be in the cloud, you know, VMware on AWS, Dave you have Stuart. options.